G'day ladies and gents, Cubic Media here with another storage tech video. All over the WaveTech server, we have constructed an enormous amount of quarries, such as this design from Parla Parla, this design by Comet107, this design that works in the nether by El Mango, and even absolutely ancient designs by Myron and Redstone Jazz from the very beginning of the Slimestone Revolution. And this concept by Cool Man, which was the first quarry to work in the overworld. But the quarry that we're interested in is located in Brazil, which is a very long way away. So instead of spending 8 minutes taking the piston bolt, let's go ahead and use the player launcher. Alright, what I want to do is put a turn of undying in my offhand. Stand in the cubicle. Look straight up. Throw the pearl. Walk into the cold web like so. If I look straight ahead. I should be flying approximately in the direction of Brazil. Oh, we've landed. But where are we? Yeah, we didn't land very far away. And here we are at the Brazil Trench. About 60,000 blocks away from spawn. Approaching the quarry itself. You'll see that this is in fact the largest quarry we have built so far on the WaveTech server. And this particular design was made by a player named Kazama. The quarries are cool and all, but what does this have to do with storage tech? Well if there is one thing that quarries are good for, it is getting massive amounts of natural resources that aren't easily renewable, such as all the various block types that you find under the ground. And the easiest way to store all these resources is to just throw them all into shulker boxes like so. But sooner or later, all these shulker boxes need to be sorted, converting all of these mixed shulker boxes into filled shulker boxes of single items. I started by looking at a concept which uses bog standard item filters combined with this extremely compact and fast shulker box loader designed by Daisy Pig. But the use of item filters means you need a separate box loader for every single item type. And it'd be quite frustrating and inefficient to simply have a separate machine for every single item type that a quarry has harvested. So let's completely scrap this concept and come up with a brand new design for a mixed shulker box merger. Our concept begins with these two machines. These are first item unloaders, and I introduced them previously in my encoded MAS video. Be sure to check out that video for all the details. But basically, this right here is one designed by Boyan, and this is one that me and Repscalion designed, which can handle unstackables. Basically, the idea of a first item unloader is that it takes a mixed box like this, places it down, forms an item filter using the first item found in the box, and then we'll eject the box, leaving any other items in the box behind. The difference with Repscalion's design is that it doesn't use these dust filters. Instead, it uses this buttered dropper to provide the signal. What this means is while Boyans cannot handle unstackables because they overflow to the next slice and cause that slice to drop items, this new design can easily handle unstackables without any issues. So here's how our box merging is going to work. If we have a bunch of shulker boxes which we know have the same item in the first slot, we can have all of these shulker boxes being unloaded simultaneously in a number of these first item unloaders at the same time, which then all get loaded into the same shulker box. And then we're going to use something like this 8x hopper speed shulker box loader to merge all of our items together again. And this will give us our full boxes of only one item type at the very end. In order to make sure that all of our shulker boxes have the same item in their first slot, we can use something like this, which is a specialized box sorter, which has been modified from one of RafQ's designs. Normally how this would work is by placing down a box, taking out the first item, then using that item to reference it with the correct slice, before placing down the box again and then sorting it into that slice. However, this particular design has been modified to keep the first box that comes into it. And what this means 
is that we can leave this slot empty and what will happen is the very first box to come through the system will leave its item in this slot right here and our box will remain in this dispenser. This box sorter has effectively automatically assigned itself to an item. From this point onwards, any shulker boxes with the same item in the first slot will now be sorted into this same slice. So if I put a bunch of shulker boxes in there like so, we can now see this in operation. And we end up getting all of these shulker boxes being sorted into this one slice. But you can clearly see that all of our boxes have been sorted into here. And our last box actually got left behind in this hopper right here. But this can be easily be fixed by replacing this dropper with another hopper. And now, yep, it will suck it straight in. And the best part is that if I want to then unassign this particular slice, all I have to do is activate the module from some external source, or then place down that last box, remove the filter item, and send that box with the rest of them. So now we have a perfect way to establish which boxes have the same item in their first slot. Although one thing that we do need to account for is boxes that might have an unstackable in the next slot that's being sorted. But as you see, just assigned the unstackable to this and this module can't actually sort anything. Fortunately, it should be possible to detect an unstackable because, as you can see, a normal stackable item only produces a signal strength of 1, while an unstackable produces a signal strength of 2. So if I just go ahead and stick this comparator right here on subtract, we are now subtracting one signal strength from it meaning it will unlock this hopper and it detects an unstackable that unstackable will drop into this chest right here and the corresponding box for that unstackable will end up in this chest right here so let's test it out Yep, there we go, it's collected the sword. Yep, and it's collected the box. Perfect. So with this mechanism, we're able to quickly separate our unstackables before they make it to our box sorter. And just to make sure that it doesn't interfere with the normal operation of the machine. There we go, and it's assigned. Perfect. And then for our overflow slice, we will want to take the items directly from here and put them straight back into their boxes. The self-assigning box sorter works by firing the dispenser and the dropper in reverse order. So the dispenser fires before the dropper, meaning the dropper pushes the first box into the dispenser after the dispenser has fired, meaning the dispenser holds onto it. Controlling this order is done using these rails. So what will happen is, when this rail is powered, the update will pause until it gets to the very end, and then it will propagate from the last rail backwards, powering first the dispenser, then the dropper. So in order to make it not cache the box and place it down immediately, taking out the item and providing our overflow, what you want to do is reverse the order so that the dropper fires, then the dispenser fires. This can be done by replacing this rail with another component that fires in the correct order. All I've done here is move this observer down to here. So now when this rail gets powered, this observer will schedule this observer to power the dropper first. Then through the rail will power this observer to power the dispenser. And it should all be in the correct order. So if we test it out. So one box in, one box out, perfect. A little while later and we have our box sorter connected to our first item unloading array, which is connected to our 8x box loader. 
Now we should probably have a talk about the steps that I skip along the way. For example, I could talk about every single timing and every single mechanism and every single aspect of the machine, but that would take me literally hours. So instead, I just find some of the more important details to show on camera. For example, you might notice that we now have two overflow slices of the box sorter. This is to do with the fact that our box sorter has a throughput of eight game ticks. Now it also happens that a hopper can push and pull items every eight game ticks. And because we have our boxes coming in every eight game ticks, the first box gets sucked up by the hopper, hopper gets put into an eight game tick cooldown, and by time this hopper can then push the box into the dropper, the next box has already arrived in the dropper, meaning the hopper will push the shulker into the dropper, then pull the shulker from the dropper at the same time. What this means, is that if I block off this first slice so that we don't sort any items and we have multiple boxes with different item types in the first slot and we alternate continuously between these shulker boxes they will temporarily assign themselves to slices like so so you can see every now and then we see two items pop into there and that is because we have a backlog of two shulker boxes in each of the slices at any given moment so we actually need to have two overflow slices to make sure we can handle all that black log and make sure that every box has the correct item put back into it. Another important detail is the choice of using a chest minecart to distribute the shulker boxes amongst all the first item unloaders. If I fill this chest up with some shulker boxes like so, you'll see that this station We'll wait until the chest market is full. And once that is the case, we'll release it and then place a shulker box into every first item unloader in an even distribution, meaning we can effectively unload all the boxes in parallel. This ensures that we obtain the maximum sorting speed possible at any given time. At the very end of the operation, we will then automatically eject the very last box, like so. Alright, with some of the components set up, I've got a little test here with boxes of one item, another item, and unstackables. So we should see these red boxes eventually end up in here, and then either the orange or white ending up in the first item unloaders, and vice versa ending up in the overflow buffer. Let's flick this lever and see what happens. Alright, it looks like the orange box was assigned to this slice and our white box is going to the overflow. If we look at our first item unloaders, you can see them now running in parallel. There we go. Unloading our boxes at 8 times hopper speed and loading this single box at 8 times hopper speed. All our unstackables ended up over here. Which means we should have... There we go, there's all our red boxes. Alright, it's finished unloading all the boxes and now it is just force this box loader to eject the box that was in there. And there we go, all the rails got merged together into the one box. There is unfortunately a bit of a caveat to this design. If we have a look in here, we can see these boxes also have the same powered rails inside of them. However, because that rail was not the first item that our box sorter could have access to, these boxes have gone to the overflow, meaning we now need to do an operation removing those redstone blocks before we can obtain the powered rails. What this means is that this box merger would probably be quite awful at just general item sorting where you can have any amount of every sort of item like this. Like if we look through these shulker boxes, we can find plenty of instances, like here, where there is a single crimson trapdoor in the first slot. However, there is literally no other box which also has a crimson trapdoor as the first sorted item, meaning we would consume an entire sorting cycle just to sort that one box with the crimson trapdoor before the system would have to go again and could get another item like 
this paper that's named or any other sort of weird item that can't be found in any other box. But the same can't be said for the items that we get from our quarry because the boxes that we specifically get from the quarry look like this where every single box is pretty much full of mixed items and it's extremely likely that we'll find multiple boxes with the same item in the first slot which you can already tell. There is also an absolutely massive amount of boxes to be sorted meaning the probability of finding 8 or more boxes with the same item in the first sortable slot is extremely likely and so we are very likely to get good utilization of the first item unloaders. This is a great example of application specific machinery. Compared to something like the parallel anti item sorter on my ultimate storage, it's quite terrible at just generally sorting items. However, it comes with the benefit of not needing a separate item filter for every single item type from our quarry. So as a result, our machine ends up being much smaller, much simpler to build, and a much better solution for this specific situation of sorting the items from our quarry. So what is left to do is to actually vastly increase the storage capacity we have here, and also for our overflow buffer, as well as our input stream. We also need to implement a system to automatically swap between the overflow buffer and the input whenever we finish an operation, as well has put all of these boxes that were unloaded back into the input stream to be sorted. And that is exactly what I have done right here. I've mocked up a simple little box silo with full hopper locking, which uses these butted piston arrays, which makes unlocking all the hoppers really straightforward by simply powering this rail to update all the pistons. And it'll unlock all at once. Then in order to lock it again, all I need to do is trigger this rail and we lock all the hoppers again for lag efficiency. We then sandwich the box silos into every section that needs a storage, such as for the first item unloading array, for the buffer for items that pass over it, as well as the input and the final output. We also got slimestone piston wires connecting up all the logic as well as water streams to transport all the items around the machine. But then when testing this for the very first time, something that drove me absolutely insane was when I gave it an input which looks like this and received an output that looks like this. In case you haven't realized, we have two full shocker boxes missing from this output. So somewhere in this machine, we were losing shulker boxes full of items. The extra clue that I needed was when I looked into this double chest and found that there were exactly four empty shulkers missing from the empty shulker output. This means that our missing shulker boxes never actually made it to the first item unloading array to be emptied. If our shulker boxes were ending up in this buffer right here, then they would have been recycled back to the input and then sorted again anyway. This drew my attention to the box sorter where there was originally a dropper right here dispensing items downwards like so into this water stream and after a few more tests I actually found out that this dropper was sometimes shooting the boxes in such a way that they would actually get stuck against this honey block like so. So after discovering this issue I then moved the dropper to a position where it would have water align the items perfectly before they drop into the water stream preventing the boxes from getting stuck in that position. All right, applying the fix and testing the machine again, we can see our first item unloading array working as intended with eight times box unloading. And with the test done, let's have a look at our output. We haven't lost any shulker boxes, perfect. With that, I think we're ready to do the proper test. So what I've done here is just pasted the machine in on the WaveTech creative server so I can test it at hypersonic speeds. I went to the location of Brazil on the creative copy and obtained some chests full of mixed shulker boxes from the quarry storage in order to test the machine. I then ran the machine overnight at tick warp. Let's go ahead and see the results. Our output is just as expected. We have full shulker boxes of all the various resources that our quarry has mined. And we've only filled roughly 10% of the capacity of this bulk silo. Although I should point out that this sample that was sorted barely scratches the surface of all the items that the quarry has collected. If we have a look inside of these chests, we can see just some of the items that our quarry has collected, 
like so. And all the way at the top here, this is where it ends. You can see some of the rarer types, like we've even got enormous amounts of raw iron. I think there's one of raw gold right here. So just an insane amount of resources that our quarry can mine. Although, after looking at the results, I do believe it would be much better to put a box sorting system in order to separate all of these various item types. Another thing I should point out is that I wasn't quite able to time this particular test because there was something that I wanted to verify first, which is what happens to all the partially filled boxes. So I've just manually turned it off and if we have a look in the input chest we can see there are only two boxes remaining. A partially filled box of dirt and a partially filled box of coarse dirt. Because what I was expecting is for there to be a partially filled box for every single individual item type that was sorted. Of course the issue here is that when we've actually finished the sorting operation, we're going to be left behind with all these partially filled boxes with different items in them that keep searching for matches. So what I think we need to do is have a system which reads the fill level of this chest. And if this chest is not full when a sorting cycle finishes, then we should consider the sorting operation to be finished. This could mean that we have some boxes of items left behind in this chest, waiting to be sorted. But compared to the sheer bulk of items that need to be sorted, I don't think that those items will be much of an issue. After implementing these changes, we now have the stop start mechanism up here, as well as a box sorting array of my own design, which is much more compact than the RAPQ system. We've also got a robust storage system for the various block types. And because the terrain that the quarry was mining it was generated in 1.16 and ran in 1.16 for some of the time, we have both the ore variants as well as their raw metal variants, which can easily be sorted together by simply setting up the item fields for the box sorters, like so, with both items. In order to set up a simple test, I'm just going to take some of these chests, place them down in the correct order, Then break them and let all the shulker boxes fall into the water stream. There we go. They'll all go into the input buffer and start filling up this chest. There we go. We're now sorting the boxes. Let's see what the first item was. Here's sorting orange terracotta. Nice. After a few passes of the chest minecart, we'll eventually fill up all the slices and be unloading at full 8x hopper speed. We can have a look inside the boxes. And they're going to remove all this orange terracotta. And our 8x box loader. There we go, we've got a full box. Here it is. Let's go ahead and just tick warp this for about an hour. And just have a look at how insanely lag efficient this sorter is. That is insane. We have a look at the input. Yep, we're switching items, so now we're sorting granite. Alright, we're switching. Now we're sorting terracotta. That is the variable sorter at work. And with the amount of unloader utilization, you can clearly see how well optimized this machine is for sorting the items from a quarry. After 73 hours, we finally have a properly timed test run of the quarry sorter. Counting the items that we sorted separately and dividing this by the total runtime of the machine, we obtain a sorting speed of about 24,000 items per hour. This is quite underwhelming given that in theory we could be sorting up to 72,000 items per hour if we were solely relying on the first item unloading array. However, there are a lot of improvements that we can actually apply to the machine. For example, we could add additional box sorting slices along with their own first item unloading arrays in order to unload boxes in parallel, effectively multiplying the entire sorting speed of this machine. And this prototype clearly proves the concept because if we have a look at our storage, we can see all of the full boxes separated neatly into their storages like so. 
However, this video is getting quite long already, so what I'll do is continue working on this prototype and publish the finished product on the Storage Tech Archive Discord. I hope you enjoyed following the designer's quarry item sorter, and let me know if you like the format. It takes far more effort for me to record a design process than it does just to build the thing and show the finished product on YouTube. So I hope you enjoyed watching and I'll see you next time.